Mm. Is Tesla going into India? What are they going to build there? A gigafactory? Sounds like it's about cars. Why are they doing this? Because obviously there was a lot of movement last year, then they pulled off. And then, you know, the China negotiation, if they're building something in India, what is China going to allow that to happen? We'll see. So here's what's happened. We've got uh, Elon met with Prime Minister Modi last week. Modi flew to the U.S. And, um, you know, that was, we documented that. We showed that last week. And uh, the news today is that there's reports that Tesla secured showroom leases in New Delhi and Mumbai, making its India launch look inevitable. Um, Tesla is now officially hiring in India, a sign that it plans to enter the country soon. They posted 13 job openings on its website, ranging from vehicle service, sales, customer support to operations positions. You can see that this certainly looks like that they're going to start selling cars there at least Maybe they're going to import cars and sell cars. Um, is that all this is? Or do you think that there is actually something bigger than this? Well, I know that based on the holdups that Modi has had in the past with this deal, it's likely to include more yeah. than just some sales over the long term. It may just start with uh, being able to import some vehicles. Um, but I think that there's a high likelihood that this is going to lead to much more significant operations in India. And I think that is honestly in the best interest of both India and Tesla. Um, you know, Tesla would very much like to build up a much bigger presence in the Asia Pacific region that's not necessarily inside of China, as we do kind of increasingly enter a world where geopolitical tensions with China and competition against China um, makes it a little bit more difficult to do business in China directly or where you just need more robustness in your supply chain. Um, and we definitely know that Elon is all about doing localized manufacturing, having independent supply chains, having much more resilience. Um, and so that's why Tesla would want it. And then obviously India would love to be able to have an industry like this that's also homegrown. They don't want to depend on China either. This is one of the reasons why they don't want imports from China. And so, you know, it's highly likely, and I, we'll get into this uh, later. I won't tease this right now, but I think that uh, Tesla and Elon have probably come up with a good solution to that for uh, Modi so that India doesn't have to necessarily import anything from China. Uh, so that's what I expect to happen. And uh, the other thing that we also know is that with the election of Trump, Elon probably has a little bit more leverage at his disposal to get the type of deal that he was looking for. Um, and then the, you know, the growth of China recently puts a little bit more pressure on Modi in India. And so maybe that is a factor in why this deal is able to get done now and it hasn't been able to get done in the past. Um, but we've known for a long time that this is something that both parties wanted. They just had to figure out exactly how to make it happen. That's a very good point about uh, good timing right now. I agree with you. I do think that um, this is more than just the service centers. Here's what uh, Jeff Lutz said he thinks possibly an agreement with Modi on low zero import duties tied to a future Tesla Gigafactory being built there. I'll be able to import cars there. But hey, you know, India really uh, protectionism. They really slap on these imports, sometimes 100%. But for Teslas, they might let them in with a very low duty. But they have to promise they're going to build Gigafactory there. The requirements below are to deliver and service vehicles as imports from Berlin, in my humble opinion. So that's what he's saying. It's going to be imported from Berlin, and that's why they're going to have these uh, these uh, showrooms. Uh, major new market for Tesla, timely for the new lower-cost vehicles too. So once Tesla starts making the new lower-cost vehicles, those would be more appropriate for India. Now, I do think, like you said, that that does... Once again, there are a lot of reasons why Elon needs a greater presence in the Asia Pacific region that is outside of China. Um, and so I think that they're gonna move ahead with this plan with India, as long as they can get India on board. The protectionism in India is the thing that's gonna be difficult for them because Elon needs them to have 
much more free trade in the area because they're not going to just want to make cars in India for India. They're also going to want to be able to export them. Uh, they're going to want to build up a parallel supply chain that in as many ways as possible can compete with the Chinese supply chain. But in order for that to happen, all of the trade regulations and restrictions have to be opened up around every part of that supply chain, both in and out of India. And I think that's the the difficulty of getting this thing done. But that's definitely something that I think both Tesla and India would benefit from. And so hopefully they can make that happen. Um, and I think that they would do that regardless of whether or not FSD gets approved in China, mm, just because it's something that there's yeah. so many other reasons that that needs to happen that I think that mm. even even if they were to get a concession from the CCP, that that wouldn't necessarily cause them to pull back from building in India, unless India wasn't willing to go along with the plan. Like India is the main bottleneck i think to that moving forward if we can solve that bottleneck we will move forward now that doesn't mean that if we don't feel like it's moving forward that we wouldn't pretend that it is moving forward and use that as negotiating leverage in china um so you know this is where these things start to get really complicated and interesting uh, a lot of uh 40 chess moves so okay at this point they're allowing tesla to sell cars into china it's very highly likely that's because they're they only agreed to do that if you build a gigafactory. And so that seems to have been approved. I, I'm much more likely that that's going to happen. I actually do think that uh, the U.S. will budge in selling chips to China. That's a big deal. I know people will go, that's impossible. But look, what happened with DeepSeek? We now know that they actually had 50,000 NVIDIA chips. Like, it's a black market. There's ways that they can have it. It's like, and if you don't really... want them to invade Taiwan, giving them, you know, just selling chips <laughs> yes. to them sure takes a lot of the incentive away from yeah. them invading. Exactly. So. It's like, it's like a, it's a fool's errand to think that they're controlling anything, honestly, because uh, China will get access to this in any, uh, there's, they already have access to it. It's just that they, they discovered that Deep Sea had access to it. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so Tesla China looks like that um, model, Tesla is ahead of the game so many times. It's not just like, you know, they're not, oh, you know, the, the famous thing is Tesla is always behind. They solve the solution, but they're so late. That's not the case. They had said that they're going to launch the new Model Y and that if you bought it in ja early January, you weren't going to get it till May. Well, it looks like that they're way ahead of schedule here. You've got uh, Tesla China is going to be begin deliveries of refresh Model Ys next week. But you can see here that uh, people who've been putting order in, their actual um, change uh, has changed their actual date of delivery. Tesla China has also changed the wording that it will deliver the new Model Y to customers starting in late February. That's now. That's next week. So this is something that's, uh, you know, they're able to do this. Do you think, Hans, that they, um, that they were just sandbagging this? Or do you think that they really were able to accelerate uh, faster than they initially thought? I think this is, they probably were sandbagging. The possibility is, you know, Elon has talked about how he usually puts his estimate at a midpoint where mm -hmm. maybe they'll be behind, maybe they'll be ahead. In this specific instance, I think they did sandbag though, because if you want to continue to sell through your existing model wise as you're Build transitioning, yeah. then you want to be like, yeah, it's probably going to be later. You're just, it's not that you're lying, but you're just saying, yeah, it's possible that it could take us longer and we're going to take the high side of the estimate on how long it's going to take as what we message to customers just because it's safer and it helps to prop up demand for existing Model Y. So that would be my read on that. And, you know, I, it's great to see these cars coming off quickly, this transition being made. Um, I really look forward to finding out, did we only upgrade the lines so that they could make these mm. refresh model Ys, or mm. were the upgrades that we made during this time, not only really? for just the refresh model Ys, but also yes. for other new vehicles that are gonna be introduced here soon. So yeah. I, I really hope that we don't have to see another line shut down in order to start producing those new vehicles. Mm. Tesla's really smart. It would really surprise me if we take these lines down twice in the first That's half of 2025. That's a very good point, Hans. 
Very good point. I, I think that this, uh, the, the fact that they're able to deliver these new vehicles, because this is not just a normal car, like every other band brand, every two years they go, hey, we got a new version. But all that is, is like a tweak here, a tweak there, and a new, you know, name. Uh, but these guys, this Model Y is a completely new car, 50% new parts, uh, so, so much better every way. I agree with you. That sounds right. So that means that they're not only delivering this, they're going to be faster in delivering They're probably the on one. track. Yeah. Yep. And by the way, that's the other thing, right? If they can deliver the Model Y, the new Model Y out there as fast as possible, that means that they can, you know, they, they gives them a lot more time to f move the other new vehicles out there much faster. If they were delayed in the Model Ys, that would, this would be delayed too, the new vehicles. So I like what you're thinking. I think that makes sense. We'll okay, see. Meanwhile, I hope so. Yep. Yeah. Oh God, I don't know how many, every time it's just the way it has been, I would say something great about what Tesla's doing and then I back it up with something bad happening with Legacy Auto and this is the news. So we've got Volkswagen and Audi, our reports are saying that they are going to continue investments in gas engines. They're pull, pushing away their electric vehicles. They extend the life cycle of current cars with combustion engines in Europe. So Volkswagen saw its electric car sales decrease by 2.7% in 2024 when Audi fell even harder, declining 7.8%. Demand for v Volkswagen's, um, the zero emission models, these, these electric vehicles decreased by 3.4%, proving that the transition to an all electric lineup will be bumpy. The new report indicates that the two brands are looking to invest more money in facelifts of current ICE models. This is gonna prolong the life cycle of the cars with combustion engines. So according to several insiders cited by the German business newspaper, Models blot, Volkswagen and Audi intend to delay their EV goals in Europe. And they initially had planned to go purely electric by 2033, but that's apparently not the case anymore. So um, yeah, Audi has already admitted it's staying flexible according to a statement by CEO. At Volkswagen, head of technical development does not exclude the possibility of keeping the Golf MK8 on sale until the middle of next decade. Oh, and then on electric MK9 is still coming by the decade's end. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's this going to do? I mean, this is not at all surprising for anyone who has read Clayton Christensen's book, The Innovator's Dilemma, or even something like Good to Great. Like if you want to make this transition and you believe it's existential for your company, you have to burn the boats and you have to go all in. That is not what any of these companies have done. And it's really, really hard to make a transition like this, where you, they have to, like the only thing that they know how to make money at is internal combustion cars. They have not and been able to figure out how to make money on an EV yet. And they know that it's, they still, like there's no end in sight to them being able to make money on EVs. So they look at that and they're like, man, we can just continue to lose money and we're gonna have to lose not just the same amount of money we've been losing, but like we're gonna have to increase the amount of money that we're gonna have to lose to hopefully survive by making EVs. Or we could just do the thing we already know how to do and we can make money. Now, yes, it's declining and eventually it's gonna run out, but at least we're not like dying tomorrow or maybe dying several years from now. And so that's the tough spot that they're in. I, the other thing I'll say though is, you know, I. It's possible that ICE cars can stick around a lot longer than we think in the Tesla bubble that is feasible. It really depends on how open the European market is to Chinese imports and whether or not Chinese companies then are able to, if they're not open to imports, uh, if Chinese companies are able to purchase companies inside of these European countries and do manufacturing there uh, the way that they have done, the way that Japanese car companies and European car companies have done here in the United States. Um, Cause that's really, you know, the, the companies that are going to win in EVs are going to be companies like obviously Tesla, potentially BYD. Um, the only reason I say that is, you know, there's so much question about, are they actually able to make money with their, accounts payable, uh, you know, as long as they don't get extended too far out over their skis, probably BYD, but then um, Xiaomi, Huawei, like some some of these companies are gonna be able to compete and compete well, compete profitably, uh, 
And if those companies are then able to sell into Europe, man, that's going to be like instantaneous death almost for, for a lot of these legacy companies in Germany, which are a huge part of the German economy. So that's where you, then you get into the government really being invested in protecting these existing companies. Um, and we've seen, you know, here in the United States, what that looks like when the government propped up GM during the 08 financial crisis. We know that uh, Japan is deeply invested in the success of Toyota. And so these companies are so large and so such critical parts of the economies and infrastructure of these countries that the the line between private company and government gets real blurry in these types of times. And so, I mean, <clears throat> it's the fact that they're not making this transition aggressively enough does not mean that they 100% will be out of business in you know two years from now or three years from now because of all of the opportunity for government involvement to really distort what is possible.